Welcome back. Flask has this other tool called variable rules that we haven't talked about. And what variable rules allows us to do is to do something like this, dynamic. So for example, slash user slash with these greater than and less than signs and the username. Now we'll get back to this in a second and some of this syntax. But if we go back, what we can do here in our server.py is perhaps, let's remove this because we don't need it anymore. Inside of our hello world, let's say that we want name in here, or in our case, username. Now, the neat thing is that Flask is going to look at this and say, oh, this is something that we can pass on into this function. So I can now say username equals the username that we receive. So let's say username. And let's just change this to name just so you see what the differences are. So I'm passing whatever I receive here into the hello world name parameter. And now in my index.html, I can pass on this data by simply doing a second parameter and saying name equals to name. So now if I save this, go back to my index.html and put in name in here. And if I go back to our homepage, if we go to our homepage, and I made a little mistake here, this should be over here. So it's saying username from up here is going to equal a default if we want. So it's usually a good idea to have a default. I'll just do none for now. So that username now is going to be username in here like this. If I save, go back, I get a not found because we don't have a homepage anymore. But anytime I do, let's say Andre, I get, look at that, Andre on my page, I get Bob and my good friend, Sally. How cool is that? So it's able to read the URL and pass in data this way. And if we go to our Flask documentation and we go to variable rules, you see that we have different rules that we can apply. For example, we can actually require to accept a positive integer or a string or a float, a path so it accepts slashes, or something called UUID, which is kind of like a unique identifier. So let's try that. Let's do a post ID here, or in our case, let's just copy this and say, I also want the username and then perhaps accept some sort of a number. So instead of post ID, maybe it could be, I don't know, actually post ID is good. Let's keep it like that. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Now in here, the second parameter can be the post ID that's going to equal to none to begin with. And we're also going to pass this as post ID, that's going to equal the post ID. If I save this, go to index.html, and in here, let's do name, and then we'll also do the post ID in here. If I save, go back, and I refresh. Well, again, because we've made our URL very specific, We'll just have to give some sort of a number. And look at that, I have Sally too. So that's her second blog post, then the fifth blog post, so on and so forth. And if I do something that's not a number, so if I do some string, I get not found because I've made the rule using this syntax, so int with the colon, saying that this has to be an ID. And I passed data down this way. So now we've created a full out server. 
we now are able to use URLs to communicate with the server and ask for specific data for it to receive. Our server, based on what URL parameters we give it, or endpoints, is able to decide what resource to send to the front end so that it can display the appropriate information. But we can also do something interesting, like perhaps when we submit a form, to actually send perhaps the user's name with the form so that when we send back a thank you note, we can say, thank you, Andre, or thank you, whatever the username is. Very, very cool. Now, these variable rules, as you can see, there's a few of them, and you can read through the documentation. You might also notice this syntax here, which is the percent sign or percent %s or percent %d. This is actually another feature of Python that you can read about. But again, it's not critical to your understanding of Python. For now, though, I think we have the basic skills necessary to start building our portfolio website. Because up until now, frankly, this website doesn't look that great. So starting in the next video, we're going to build a really, really cool website. Something that looks, well, more like this. So that by the end of it, we can have a fully fledged portfolio website. And even though it seems like you haven't learned that much yet, you actually have learned all the skills necessary to build something like this. Well, kind of. Let's go explore some more in the next video.